Molim učesnike prvog panela da mi se privrže. Ovi koji malo bolje znaju geografiju primetit će da je sa nama i ambasador jedne zemlje koja nije u Evropi. Ostavit će vam da pogodite koje je. Tako da evo sada smo okupili okupili Evropu Evropu plus Egipat. Još jednom da se zahvalim dragi Ivane, predsednicima pokrenjske vlade, predsednicima gradske uprave, kolegama koji su ovde iz drugih medija, vašim ekscelencima, ambasadorima, zaista kao što je Ivan rekao, evo, upravo nam je došla i ambasadorka, ambasadorka Izraela. Kao što je Ivan rekao, zaista na ovom skupu imat ćemo možda veći broj ambasadora nego što je bio na nekim političkim događajima prethodnih prethodnih godinu dana u Srbiji i upravo je to ono što ovu konferenciju koja je do sada bila samo regionalna čini međunarodnom. Ove godine zaista pored regionalnih iskustava Srbija, Hrvatska, Bosna, Hercegovina, Crna Gora i Makedonija imat ćemo i to neko međunarodno iskustvo koje će nam dati ambasadori u prvom panelu evropskih zemalja i u drugom panelu zemalja iz celog sveta, znači van evropskih zemalja. Panel ćemo zbog naših kolega voditi na engleskom jeziku, pretpostavljam da je to ok. Mr. Bakota, Mr. Bakota, welcome. You are Croatian ambassador to Serbia. In Croatia, I know originally you are from Dalmatinska, from Dalmatinska Zagora, is that true? Yeah. Uh, yes, so do you serve many, 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 many thanks. Dear, do you dear serve sir. also lamb origin, for I'm origin, vegetarians? I was, yes, I was born in Zagreb, uh, but my family roots are from Dalmatia. So, in a way, I am combining those different those two, two, so two regions of, two of, regions of Croatia. Well. So you serve also like Greeks? You serve lamb for vegetarians or no? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, no, this lamb, is, lamb is very popular in Croatia, especially in Dalmatia and in the central part of Croatia. Okay, uh, the, uh, Croatia is probably one of most uh, very well known or most popular uh, touristic country in the in the in this region from from people from United States or all, all over the world. Uh, what is what is your uh, your favorite dish from your childhood and from 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 your from your country? Actually, the interesting thing with Croatia is this combination from two influences, Central European and Mediterranean. And actually, uh, well, since I'm coming from Zagreb, uh, my favorite dish is uh, Siri Vrhnje, cheese and cream. This is a very special um, ent entry for, for uh, the first, cor first course in, in Croatia, especially in Zagreb. Uh, Siri Vrhnje meaning strukla or not? Cream. No, another food is very special in Hrvatsko Zagorje, in northern part of Croatia is strukli. So Strukli is very famous and it's, it's quite different from uh, the other specialities uh, in the other countries. Could be compared with pita or with uh, uh, burek, something like and this. And Siri is salty. baked? It's salty, but it's totally different. So it's, it's, it's a speciality in, from Zagreb and nearby Zagreb. So and totally Strukli you first, you first cook, then, then exactly, bake? Exactly, yes. Yeah. You cook and then... Uh, uh, you make it another way. So uh, this is very typical in Zagreb. Uh, and when it comes to Dalmatia, my, uh, definitely my recommendation would be pašticada. It's, a, it's the combination mixture from gnocchi on one side and, the other, and on the other side, of course, uh, the meat. So it's, a, it's, it's always done in a very slow uh, mood. So you got to prepare this, this uh, meat a couple of days and it's very typical uh, for, for Dalmatia. Istria, of course, is, it is totally diverse, totally different, in, and it makes Croatia very interesting, this diversity. Istria, uh, when it comes to food and, and uh, enology, of course, the wine is very perfect in all, all over Croatia. So you have continental wines from, from Slavonia, from northern Croatia, like Graševina, like Traminac, and then when, when it comes to Istria, Mal Malvasia is a very popular brand in, in Serbia as well. And of course, I would say Poship and Dignac, Dignac very popular wines 
from southern part of Dalmatia. So it's very diverse. And in what state is Croatian wine industry now, by your opinion? It's maybe interesting uh, for people in Serbia how entering European Union um, improved this, this, this industry. What is Tremendously, tremendously. The, the opportunities from the European Union when it comes to the wineries and the enology and wine industry are fantastic. Uh, when it comes to the EU funds, uh, there are plenty of, of opportunities, and you can see basically on the weekly basis some of the best wine producers coming from Croatia to Serbia presenting their wine, so it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they get some promotional found, absolutely funds from... promotional. So uh, I think it's very important to say that it, uh, the wineries, the food, uh, tourism, enology really benefited from, from the Croatian membership into the European Union. So and it really fits with the touristic offer. But as I remember, uh, uh, flourishing of uh, Croatian wine industry started even before uh, entering the European Union with this uh, promotional spot on CNN with, uh, with, yes. uh, with this, with, with this uh, I think, uh, this guy, who, who was the presenter, this journalist, famous... Uh, Bakal uh, no, uh, Rene Balkalovic, Rene, yes, Rene yes, Bakalovic, that's true. Yes. I think it's, it's <coughs> inseparable from, from, from the tourist offer in Croatia. Uh, especially in Istria and in Dalmatia. The food offer, uh, uh, gastronomy was very much deeply rooted in our tourist presentation and to, nowadays when, when you are coming from some day, sometimes from some parts of Europe, people are coming <coughs> to Croatia not only to see and to, to face the beauty of Croatia, but also to, to taste some excellent excellent food and excellent stuff, very unique because it's an, an excellent combination of, as I already said, Central European and uh, Mediterranean cuisine. Yes, Ambassador Kuchta mentioned that we were part of, of the same uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire 100 years ago, and our neighboring region, uh, neighboring region to Vojvodina, Slavonia, was also part of this. And what about Slavonian cuisine? What, what is what is speciality there? I think in Slavonia we have a lot of so things. So we can in see common. Strukli so, now. Yes, Strukli. Uh, yeah, this, this is, is Strukli from from. Uh, northern part of Croatia, uh, from the region, from the Zagreb region, and uh, from Hrvatski, Hrvatska Zagori. So it's very unique, uh, totally different taste from the similar uh, uh, similar specialities in the region. Uh, so it could be could be compared with some other uh, um, with some with burek or with, with with some salty dishes, but it's very unique because it's it is prepared in a different way around. So Strukli is from Zagreb. Uh, when it comes to Slavonia, there are a lot of similarities with Vojvodina here, uh, but of course, very special sausage is uh, mm, kulen. The kulen, definitely very spicy. Uh, it's a hard stuff, uh, but very tasty, and absolutely unique for uh, this Danube region. So there are excellent. It's have, it has to be combined with the wine offer. Mm -hmm. Uh, one month ago, we organized a um, conference regarding of uh, using fish in our in our daily daily cuisine, and I read some some statistic. Uh, so in in Serbia, we we have only seven kilos per 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 uh, persona per year. Uh, we ate fish, which is which is really low. And I saw some statistics in Croatia that in in the Dalmatia is extremely high, of course, because of sea, and even in Slavonia because of this tradition of of, of the the new rivers and fish and everything. Yes, I think the the membership in the EU was very important for uh, uh, the fish producers, and uh, it's it's getting now much better in this regard. So we are running campaign because it's very much in line with the slow food tradition and uh, people who are coming to Croatia, they're really willing to taste some of the specialities like, for example, brudetto, uh, fantastic stew, a kind of a combination of different different fishes together. Uh, uh, and of course, risotto is my favorite stuff, especially black risotto. I think so, it's, okay. a, it's a very fantastic Later we will, we will speak about, about uh, cuisine here in, in in Serbia and some Croatian, Croatian or Dalmatian restaurant in Belgrade. With, with us is also uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador of uh, Republic of Cyprus to Serbia, Mr. Konstantin Eliades. Uh, welcome, welcome to welcome to Novi Sad. So, what is what is your favorite cuisine and dish in in in, in Cyprus? Yes. Uh, well, I'm a big uh, meat eater. 
So you are not you are not vegetarian like this, <laughs> like this guy, <laughs> son son in law <laughs> of Greek family. So it's baked in the oven or it's no, it's no, it's, it's on charcoal. It's uh -huh. on a grill and it takes it's it's uh, it's a ceremonial to do that. Every Cypriot, uh, every decent Cypriot has to know how to make meat on the speed. And it's uh, usually an occasion for families, friends to get together and uh, of course to to prepare this meat it takes at least two hours. And then uh, after that, it's, it's a big feast. Everybody, friends, families, enjoy eating the meat and everything that comes around, the salads and the, all the accompanies. And from which part of Cyprus you are originally, your family? Well, I, to be honest, I was not born in Cyprus, but, ah, I, was, okay. I, <laughs> but I, uh, I was raised in Limassol. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, uh, now I live in Nicosia, but I, I was... Raised in Limassol, so I consider my Limassol my, uh, my hometown. Mm -hmm. Because Cyprus is, is of course, famous uh, um, touristic uh, touristic country with, with many. I, I don't know statistics. Uh, well, do, do you have statistics? How many tourists goes to Cyprus per per year? Well, you have? Uh, I have some numbers about last year, which was a record year. We have almost uh, four million tourists, which uh, for an island. Uh, so that population of around 900,000, that's quite extraordinary. So every, on every, it's four, four per, per, per one person, per yeah. one local person, yeah. And what is, uh, in your opinion, what is the fa favorite dish for, for, for tourists? Because, because sometimes uh, uh, people from all over the world, they like something different that, 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 that local people. Well, I, I really wouldn't be able to say, but, um, you know, Cyprus, it's uh, essentially Mediterranean cuisine. Of course, we have uh, married, uh, we have accepted influences, and we have married our geography with culinary influences from our surrounding uh, our neighbors, and we have integrated them with our uh, local know-how and uh, local products, etc. So different people like different things. Uh, there are people who like uh, our fish, people who like our meat dishes. Uh, everybody appreciates Cypriot wines. Um, so, uh, so majority of tourists are still uh, from Britain, or or yes, it's our it's main, our main uh, tourist market is the United Kingdom, and then there is also Germany, Russia. We are working also as Scandinavian countries and uh, Greece, and we are working also to increase the numbers from Serbia. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. We have we have direct we have direct yes, flight. We yeah, have, uh, two yeah. Companies uh, flying uh, four times a week uh, during summer time and in winter time on the Air Serbia flies direct. Thank you. Uh, with us is also uh, Andrzej uh, Kinjuk, charge the affair of Embassy of Poland in, in Serbia. Andrzej, welcome to, 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 to Novi Sad. Is this first time in Novi Sad or not? No, definitely not. I've been here many times before, both privately and officially. Great, great. So what can you tell you about Polish cuisine to us? Because many, many people here probably don't know anything at all about Polish cuisine. So I would start by saying that 30 years ago, just after the start of communism, the Polish people were fascinated by the fast food culture. That was a new phenomenon back then, something that we didn't know uh, at that time. And I can still remember the McDonald's restaurant being literally under siege uh, by, <clears throat> by curious and hungry tourists. When was first McDonald's open? I to think in, it was in 1990. So two years after Serbia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Belgrade right. people in Belgrade, they are, right, they are right. always proud that the first McDonald's restaurant in Eastern Europe was opened right, in, in right, Belgrade. Right, yeah. right. But, but today many things have changed. And while the uh, McDonald's restaurants and others are doing fine, we have sort of rediscovered our culinary roots. 
uh, the routes that are very vast and diverse, as diverse as our uh, long and complicated history. Uh, as a result, uh, we have influences in our cuisine of many nations and nationalities that uh, populated uh, Polish lands. These are Ukrainians, uh, Jews, uh, Lithuanians, uh, Belarusians, uh, and others, and of course... Germans. Yeah. And Germans yeah. as well, that's, that's right. But the trend nowadays is, as you said in your, in your uh, preparatory remarks, is to eat locally. So that's that's uh, that's what what we what we like to eat uh, nowadays. Uh, I have to tell to tell you there are certain similarities between Polish and Serbian cuisine. In fact, uh, uh, upon arriving uh, to Serbia, uh, I've uh, well there are many dishes that I've considered to be typically Polish. But once arriving in Serbia, I learned that they are typically Serbian. Which one, for instance? <laughs> and and this is, for example, podvarak, something typically Polish. Uh, this, is, <laughs> uh, this is this is sarma, yes. our our beloved meal. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the ninety percent of of countries will say the same. Yes, yeah. yes, right. Uh, this is uh, chufte. <laughs> this is chicken soup. This is strudel and other things. So, so that is something. That so you are I'm, sure you are not from Serbia? No, <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. So that is, that is something that, that, that I would recommend to you. But uh, also there are m many dishes that are no uh, that, that are no uh, not known to Serbian people that much. I would say Polish cuisine is uh, primarily characterized by the richness of soups. What is that that we can see now? Some some sweets. Da, yes, yes. I would I would come to sweets later, but yeah. it's it's uh, we, we enjoy our soups made of beans, mushrooms, cabbage, tomatoes, of just about everything. There is very no very well known sour soup, uh, sour dish of grated flour and chlodnik, soup of beetroot uh, served cold with uh, milk and yogurt. So. That is something that we are proud of. Last, last week I was surprised. I visited a big plantation of apple plantation here in, in Srem. And uh, I think uh, their representatives are, are also here. And they told me that uh, Poland is number one producer of apple in Europe, that you, you cover 80% of market uh, with, with, with apple. Yeah. This is interesting. And, and th th those plantations, they said they are 30 and 40 years old, so it is from, from communism period. Yeah, yeah. Yet, yeah, definitely, we have dominated the apple market throughout the world, so it is not surprising that apples are very much represented in, in, our, in the local kitchen cuisine. Apples are cooked, fried, baked, grilled, dressed. Uh, well, we make apple jams, cakes, uh, compotes, uh, tasty fillings for pancakes, just about everything. And, and there is an interesting story that uh, brings us back to, to politics and the political issues, uh, something that we are very much concentrate, concentrated on as, as diplomats. And this is a, a light alcoholic beverage called cider, uh, a fermented juice of apples without the addition of, of sugar. You know, in 2014, after Russia banned uh, the exports of some Polish products, including apples, uh, well, surplus fruit piled up, and became, it became sort of a, a patriotic duty in Poland to eat apples. But <laughs> <laughs> and at, this it, was campaign, really? It, it was a government-sponsored campaign, but it's a, it and was, it was accepted by it was it was universally accepted by by just about everyone in Poland. Ah, that's we, that's Poland. That's what we are proud of. Yeah. And it was in this climate that uh, our love for cider was born and discovered. And cider, you know, the cider producers are really thankful uh, to the Russians and their sanctions uh, policy. <laughs> but on, the, on a serious note, this story testifies to the uh, creativity and entrepreneurial spirit uh, of, of the Polish people. people. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, with us is also Anna Kristina Popa, ambassador of Romania to Serbia. Welcome, Anna. You are for sure not first time in in, in Novi Sad? Um, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. It's great to be here again. Yeah, so you are also neighboring neighboring country to our to our <coughs> province Vojvodina. So what can you tell tell us about about your cuisine? Well, um, we, we are also vegetarian like the Greeks. <laughs> we uh, have a, a saying for that, which goes like, there is no bird like the pig. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
And the other, um, uh, the other thing with our cuisine is uh, that our national cuisine is pretty much everybody else's national cuisine in the neighboring countries. Um, so uh, anything ranging from uh, sarma, we call them sarmale, <laughs> to um, uh, polenta or kachamak, which we call momaliga. Um, we also have a variation of uh, siri vrhnia, which is cottage cheese with uh, sour cream. Um, we have um, uh, gombot, which is uh, knedel, the shlivom, or uh, uh, kaisom, yeah. with, uh, with um, uh, apricots or plums. We, all, we, also, we also said gombots. <laughs> uh, gombots yes, yeah. so, um, but, but then of course, it, as you, you very well know, historically speaking, Romania has been under, under two major influences throughout the history for many hundreds of years, Austro-Hungarian Empire and Turkish Empire, so pretty much everything is divided in, uh, around the country, around those main... Uh, between main, Transylvania uh, and... Between and Transylvania and Banat on the one hand, uh, southern Romania, uh, Valachia on the other, and then uh, um, the, the northern uh, and in eastern part, Moldova and Bukovina um, have some, some uh, more like uh, Russian influences. And then, of course, we have the Danube Delta region, which is very particular. Um, it's unique in Europe, and food is also very unique. It's mostly fish. Um, when, we, when, we, um, uh, when I talk about fish, it is it's mostly um, uh, sweetwater fish. Uh, we have several trout specialties. Um, and uh, pretty much like uh, my, 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 the, the speakers before me have, uh, have said, uh, these days there is a, uh, a, a big trend of reinterpreting national cuisine and of uh, returning to, to slow food. Well, we have also gone through the fascination of uh, fast food in the early 90s. Uh, but now, basically, there is this return to, um, to, to, to slow food and to homemade, uh, homemade meals, which are heavily advertised um, related to the tourism industry as well. Our uh, tourism is very much concentrated on ethno-tourism and on, uh, on rural tourism, and food is a great component of, of that. Uh, but, but one thing I'd like to mention is because we, we have the presidency now, for another three weeks, yeah. um, and uh, one of the um, aspects that we have tried to do during this presidency, aside of uh, the political diplomatic aspects of uh, hard uh, core politics that you know, we have also tried to promote um, uh, branding. And this is something uh, that may be important for Serbia because a lot of people ask, you know, how can you maintain your national um, um, identity uh, once you join the EU and, and in fact it's not only that you can maintain it but the whole point of, uh, of being in, in the EU is that you promote your, your national brands and, and one of the things that you, okay you have to work for this but, but it's a, a huge um, someone, success. Someone ma mentioned that in, in countries like, like Serbia or Bosnia or Macedonia it's always, always afraid that uh, becoming part yeah, of exactly, European exactly. Union will equal us and equal our cuisine and exactly, culture and exactly. make us. But, but to, to example find that I, I, bought, I brought here today uh, one of our uh, national brands that we have, um, um, I don't know what, what the word is. Um, uh, for, for what? We, uh, that we have, uh, um, we have, uh, uh, that was accepted as an official national brand mm -hmm. in Europe. And Offici officially, it was re yeah. recognized and yes, registered. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like Ivar is Slovenian. Like Ivar is Slovenian. And that is uh, that is a special plum jam, which is called uh, Majun, and it is uh, being uh, manufactured through a very specific procedure. And I have brought it here today for oh, you super. to taste so in a coffee break. Yeah. Yes, together with uh, some Romanian wine. It's a uh, strange combination for an 11 o'clock uh, coffee break, jam and wine, but uh, in small quantities. I'm sure it's going to be okay. Okay, yep. um, so so that is that is something that although a country has to work hard on to, to brand a national product, it's very re rewarding at the end because it's yours and you can use it and go with it around the world. So you do have to work for it, but it is rewarding. And in no case does the EU um, uh, kill your uh, your national identity. On the contrary, this whole concept of unity and diversity does I exactly this. So um, thank you, thank you for for, <coughs> for now. Uh, Thomas, you already mentioned what is what is your your favorite dish in in in, che in your country, Czech Republic. Is there any Czech restaurant in in Belgrade or 
or in, in Serbia that we don't know? There is a restaurant called uh, Gvozdjara. Gvozdjara? Gvozdjara. It's uh, under the Brank uh, Bridge. Brankov Bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, so this is pub or restaurant? or It's a, re it's a restaurant it's pub. A rest uh, but uh, it's a mixture between the Czech beer and uh, Serbian cuisine. So mm -hmm. uh, mostly very, very high quality Czech beer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it because uh, Czech cuisine uh, is not uh, very popular here in in Serbia. Our our meals are uh, much heavier, maybe mm -hmm. because of climate. Uh, so we have dumplings and and sauce and and mushroom, uh, knee. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say the, the pork knee and and uh, and. Uh, I don't think in, let's say, Serbian weather yes. uh, would be the, the best choice. So, uh, for Serbian market, the best choice is the Czech beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere is the best, best choice. We have, and we, we have here one video, if we can, uh, we can uh, just, it's, it's one minute. Yeah? yeah? Objevte kroužek, kvasnicový ležák z Budějovického budvaru. So here you can you can uh, imagine what what it means when I say that the beer is our bread uh, because in Czech Republic uh, we consume 140 liters per year per person including uh, babies. <laughs> <laughs> so that's statistic. <laughs> so we are number one in the world. Uh, it, it, it makes very nice bodies. And uh, we recommend it because it's very, very healthy and full of uh, vitamins. Thank you. Thank you. It is important also to say that uh, today in Novi Sad we have a visit from Czech Republic, from your, uh, I think, agriculture chamber chamber here and uh, many uh, Czech um, beer producers are here in Novi Sad and they will join us for a uh, last panel and uh, we'll be in, um, in position to, to try some, some, some Czech beers also. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Just a second. Here, here is also uh, Roman uh, Weixer, uh, deputy of ambassador of Slove Slovenia. Welcome, Roman. Uh, hello. Hi. So Slovenia was also part of of two countries <laughs> together with, with with Serbia. First, out also Hungary, uh, later on Yugoslavia, and many people in in, in Serbia in this region probably are well, very well aware about Slovenian cuisine. But what can you tell us? Yeah, well, Slovenia cuisine was uh, uh, as a small country was influenced by uh, big cuisines which are surrounding it. So, uh, meaning Italian cuisine, uh, German cuisine, uh, Hungarian, and uh, well, I, I can call it Balkan cuisine. I hope that Croatian ambassador will not take <laughs> against me. But. Uh, and uh, consequently, we have a really large variety of uh, dishes which can be offered. And uh, um, it's uh, our tourist board, uh, s they have noticed the potential that lies in the gastronomy. Uh, and uh, they have included gastronomy as one of the key elements in uh, promoting the tourism. Well, uh, you, you will see in the presentation, we have done the research on our key markets. You have different yeah. gastronomy regions of, of you, you yeah, divided. There are, uh, yeah, but uh, the point is that there is a, a large segment of people deciding on where to go to spend their uh, holidays on food. They are called foodies. And uh, it's around, you will see it's around 30% in some countries, uh, namely in Germany, let's say, and Italy, where uh, the most tourists uh, to Slovenia come from. Uh, so that's why we made uh, a sort of a, a national uh, uh, strategy. This is this is old, but we made 
uh, we renewed this strategy of gastronomy and make, made it quite simple. So we have a couple of uh, front-runner dishes that can be offered to the, to, the, to the guests. And then you have 300 typical dishes of Slovenia, which goes from uh, some of the dishes which can be tried all along the countries that are surrounding us, and some of them are being typical Slovenian, uh, as uh, Richet or, uh, I don't know, Jota or Putica. Uh, dishes that are, I think, known to the Serbian uh, people from previous times, but they are not known uh, European-wide, so they are quite, quite typically local. Prekomurska gibanica, is that Slovenian yes. or Croatian? No, no, Prekomurska gibanica is Slovenian. Is Slovenian. <laughs> yes, uh, they, in Croatia you can also find a variety of this gibanica, but it's a bit different. So this Prekomurska is, uh, I wouldn't call it Slovenian, because it's very regional. It's yeah, it's, a, it's a, actually it's a, with Jewish roots, I think, this. I don't know what what is the name for this cake. Probably Alona will tell us la later on. But it, it looks beautiful and tastes beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Really. We, we, the the uh, literal translation would be over Mura moving cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, uh, it's it's right there on uh, on the right. There. Yeah. So this is this is typical. Uh, this is what, what I was trying to say that the eastern part has totally different cuisine than the western part, which is. Uh, uh, connected uh, a bit influenced by Italian cuisine and has lots of uh, seafood, salads, etc. Or the Alpine cuisine that was influenced mostly by the German cuisine and we have this famous uh, Kranska klobasa, you know, the, 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 the Carniola sausage. Uh, Kranska meaning the old uh, name for Slovenia, so basically it would be Slovenian sausage. And then we have this uh, famous sweet bread, it's called putica. And uh, I think it's found only in Slovenia and maybe some parts of northern Croatia also, but they call it differently. But it's really, really something typical and that you cannot try any, anywhere, anywhere else. And you also have Strukli, as I can see. Uh, yes, Strukli, but they are different from Zagorski Strukli. <laughs> uh, they, are, uh, they are not baked at the end, they are cooked. They are and, cooked? Yeah, and you have two varieties. You have the soup, Only cooked. Only cooked. Yeah, because and Zagorska... They are baked, yeah. They are baked later. Okay. Uh, and they are made uh, either from the, the, uh, the white flour or from the black flour, the one that uh, held, I don't know how is it in English. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, they can be either sweet or salty. So it's, uh, uh, it could be as a dessert also. Um, and uh, we have also a special dish called Jganzi. Which you can, I, I haven't seen it anywhere else. It's basically from the flour, and you dry the flour really, really dry. So it's you dry it on fire, and then you you put some water in it, and then it goes it, it goes together, and then you eat it. So this is this mm -hmm. is called shkanzi, uh, and uh, it used to be a, a meal for very, uh, let's say, poor or, or uh, people from the from really the farms. Did, yeah. Yes. And now it's really, a, a, let's say, high-class cuisine, uh, particularly if it's combined by Slovenian wines, which are uh, becoming more and more uh, popular, uh, also wider region, um, especially because our front runner of the winemakers, uh, they produce orange wines. So it means, uh, uh, let's say, biodynamic, organic uh, wines, not sprayed, uh, low quantities, but very high quality and very high price. So this is our front runner of our uh, winemaking uh, uh, production. Uh, that's one of the, 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 what I wanted to say, that the gastronomy is very high on the, uh, um, on, in our new tourism strategy, uh, and uh, it's uh, basically, it's one of the four most important elements of the tourism promotion in Slovenia. So, uh, we, are, we, we are still, uh, I mean, we still have a long way to go to, um, uh, to to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, exploit this capacity of gastronomy in tourism, but uh, hopefully we're on the uh, we're on the good way. <coughs> what is your statistics, tourist statistics for last year? Do you have in Slovenia? Uh, yeah, it's uh, <coughs> uh, we had really high growth of. Uh, uh, there's a graph here. We have 18 percent growth of tourism uh, in uh, uh, 2016 yeah. and 2017. Why is, was that? This is really tremendous. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> really it's really above average, and it's very uh, uh, very good for our uh, tourism because uh, it was a couple of years earlier. The statistics were different, so our capacities were. And what's happened in year 2017? Please uh, tell us. <laughs> no, it was uh, the Slovenia was uh, Ljubljana was green capital of Europe in 2017, and Slovenia in 2016. I think it was in. Uh, 
uh, it was a sort of an undiscovered gem in in, in the um, uh, this national national geographic. Uh, so uh, I think all this promotion. So and uh, you have to present your country differently. So it has to be different. And gastronomy really helps here. Uh, because gastronomy is is local, it can be it cannot be global because the products are local. So this is this is one of the way how to present your 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 tourism really how your country is different from other countries. Thank you. Uh, welcome again to uh, ambassador to uh, Egyptian ambassador to to Belgrade. Uh, please tell us first uh, about this flight. Maybe it will be interesting for our potential potential guest from Serbia to, to Egypt. Thank you Robert, um, for, uh, for inviting us and I was going to say thank you for accommodating the change in schedule. Um, no matter how much we talk about food, uh, if you don't taste it, it's different. So if you want to taste it, you can come with me tonight or early evening. First flight of Air Serbia um, and Air Serbia baby to Cairo. We're very happy of, uh, that the Air Serbia um, um, actually decided to take that decision. Um, and again, um, you can either taste it in Tolstoy at 25 Belgrade, but the better one is in Cairo uh, through the line. <laughs> okay, and uh, what about cuisine in Egypt? So as I was to say, first of all, it's you know being the last speaker, I'm getting very hungry, so I hope to taste things uh, in there. After all, European <laughs> specialities. The the one maybe specific thing about gastronomy and and um, and gastronomic cuisine in in, um, in Egypt is um, is that literally you can carve out those carvings from the pharaonic temples and um, and experience uh, what the pharaohs 5,000 years ago used to do. And if you skim um, through that presentation a little bit more, you'd find that one, the, the largest feast in Egypt called Shamanistim, is literally what the pharaohs used to do at the beginning of spring, uh, where they would eat salted uh, fish that they have salted throughout um, uh, the winter. Um, Re river, f uh, sweet water fish, river, fresh water fish? Uh, yeah, have, yeah. Actually, that's another thing is that in Egypt you can taste the two seas. You can taste the fish of the Red Sea and the fish of the uh, Mediterranean. Mediterranean, let alone, of course, the Nile. So if you skim through that and you get to the Shaman um, um the, um, the um, festival of, of spring, um, whereby you eat the salted fish, and some would say because it has a very strong smell, that literally that fish comes from the pharaoh's time. So you <laughs> This is part of it, and it's the one feast that groups um, all Egyptians, uh, no matter what their um, um, ethnic or religious affiliation is, and very much spring-like um, because you eat the, um, um, the, those fresh vegetables with the salted fish with a lot of uh, onions. Um, so, um, starting spring, like ukus in, in Serbia. In Serbia. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, next question for Ambassador of Croatia is uh, uh, w what kind of Croatian or Dalmatian restaurant we have in, in Belgrade? If, if we want to taste Croatian food or, or food from, from Dalmatia, what do you recommend us? Well, first of all... Uh, Please, my, microphone. Uh -huh. Basically, in, I wouldn't say in every single restaurant, but in many restaurants, which are, of course, owned by and run by by the Serbian people, you can find some Croatian dishes, especially from Dalmatia, because Dal Dalmatia and Istria are extremely popular in Serbia. There are many positive re reminiscences on uh, 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 the, the previous the generations who were coming to Croatia to visit Dalmatia, uh, Istria, etc. So you can find basically everywhere Croatian food, and excellent food, by, by the way. Secondly, there are two restaurants, of course, I highly recommend it. In Se on Senjak, you can find Cafe Cafe, uh, run by, by the yeah. Croatian person, Croatian uh, chef from, uh, from Zagreb, uh, who is also partly in Dalmatia, on the island Hvar. And of course, the Tata Mata in the mm -hmm. center of the city. Uh, so there are some excellent restaurants uh, with excellent Croatian food, especially from Dalmatia. When it comes to the continental side, you can find excellent restaurants in Subotica, for example. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic mixture of the different ingredients and specialities. And of course, I wouldn't, of course, uh, I have to mention that when it comes to Serbian cultural offer and, uh, and gastronomy offer, minorities are playing a very important role. Yeah, you so have it's, uh, minority So it's here. very interesting to, to see this combination of uh, the different influences uh, in Croatia as well as in Serbia. Of course, long tradition and absolutely excellent offer 
And what about fish? Uh, wh where they come from? Uh, is that what's your experience in the restaurants? It's it's from Croatia, from Montenegro. Is it fresh? Is it from? It's hard to say. It's Nobody is saying whether this fish is coming from from Montenegro. Uh, some of them even from from Croatia. Uh, but basically, uh, it's almost the same the same taste. And I could say really excellent food. So, of course, on the other side, if you want to taste the real. Special specialities from Croatia. The best offer, uh, the best option will be, as my Egyptian friend said, come directly to Croatia. It's not far away. <laughs> and I, by the way, I just want to say that uh, Serbian airline also introduced uh, regular flights, especially in the summer season, to Zadar, Split. And to Rijeka, and Split. So there are excellent. And to Pula, and to, to Pula, Dubrovnik, to Pula, Dubrovnik. So please come to Croatia and see those. Uh, huge diversities uh, in the different regions of Croatia. So there are some very good restaurants in Belgrade as well. And Zagreb is not far away, so yeah. it's, uh, especially. I want to say that in the capital of Croatia, Zagreb, was awarded by, as uh, the best tourist destination, especially in the Christmas winter time, market three couple, times no. in a row. Uh, so there are excellent offers by the sausages and uh, also slow food is getting very popular. So we have made this transformation. So this is not your first time in Serbia. Uh, you were in Serbia in, in 90s also uh, in the embassy. Uh, what about Serbian cuisine and Serbian food? What is your favorite dish? You are, you are frequent everywhere in, in, in Belgrade. So it, it is really hard to, hard to decide and hard to resist sometimes. So uh, tell us. I got to be politically correct in yeah, this regard because you can find everywhere in Serbia fantastic food. I was very much amazed by, by, the, by the food in Pirot, in Southern. Pirot, really? Pirot, Southern uh, uh, Serbia, fantastic. Fantastic mixture of the different influences. You tried Peglana, The lamb Kobasica. over there is fantastic. Peglana, Kobasica, etc. So this is one part. Another part I could highly recommend it is Subotica, northern part of Vojvodina. Uh, there are some excellent restaurants, but, uh, also run by uh, by the uh, members of the Croatian community in Serbia. So fantastic, very diverse as well. A lot of influences uh, from the Eastern side, from the European side, so you can find excellent food in Serbia as well. Konstantino, same, same question for you. Uh, <coughs> what, what kind of uh, Cypriot or, 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 let's say, Greek, or I don't know, this, this, this type of food we can find in Belgrade today, if, you, if we are interested? Well, unfortunately, Yep. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, there are no typical Cypriot restaurants yeah. in Belgrade, but there are uh, there is a small Greek restaurant. Of course, Cypriot cuisine and Greek cuisine are not identical, but they have, of course, similarities. Uh, so there's a small restaurant, can say names? Yeah, yeah, you can say names. So there's a small restaurant in Zem called Kiatake. Uh, it's, uh, it's also a charming restaurant to, to view up the inside, but it also has excellent food. And there's another restaurant, I don't recall the name, but I know it's on Cernogorska Ulica. Uh, it's not typically Greek, but it serves also Greek uh, cuisine, and it's also good. Uh, so that's the two, let's say, closest. Yeah, two uh, original, yeah. To a, to a Cypriot restaurant that I know in the... And what about uh, your experience with Serbian well, Serbia cuisine? Has, <laughs> Serbia has excellent food. Uh, wherever you go, even... Even in the remotest area, you will uh, have great food, and you have a big choice. And, uh, because, and will... because your your country is, is is really successful in tourism, what will be your your suggestion su suggestion to our uh, tourism industry and to our to our people how to promote uh, our food as a brand? Because <coughs> we yes, we have great. Great food, but I don't think that we are so very well recognized all over the world. Of course, you you are you are in Belgrade, so you know. But people from UK or or United States, what what what, what is the best way? Uh, later on, we will have some some uh, panel about uh, food bloggers, about new ways of promotion. So, what is what what is your recommendation in that? I'm not an expert on the issue, yeah. but I would, uh, I would uh, think that uh, it's a question of us, one of the panels in the, uh, our actual uh, discussion is about, it's about branding and about making people outside of Serbia discover Serbia and want to come here. Uh, because uh, I've had the chance to travel 
to various places for uh, in Serbia from the south to, to, to the north, east, west. Uh, there are great places, but they are not discovered. They, they are not known. Even in Serbia, people don't know uh, about those small little treasures. So uh, the Serbian competent authorities should include in their tourism strategy uh, this uh, how to promote also not just Belgrade and uh, historical monuments in Serbia, Vojvodina, etc., but also uh, what other uh, beauties and what other uh, things uh, Serbia has to offer, like like food, like wine. You have excellent wines here, although I'm not uh, a connoisseur in wines, but uh, <laughs> you have excellent wines, you have excellent food. So in your global strategy for promoting Serbia, touristically, these things should also be promoted. Thank you. Uh, Andrzej, uh, do you think it's, a, it's a also a matter of, of reputation in case of, of Cyprus, after everything what happened in the 70s, Cyprus became uh, a very well-known touristic power, I think, starting in, in 80s or, 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 or when, or even... Yeah. Even even earlier, but but <clears throat> it, it was it was big big jump de then. Uh, so so in in case of of Poland, po Poland is also not so uh, very well <clears throat> typically touristic country like like Croatia or like <clears throat> like Italy or, or France. And how you deal with this with this uh, with this topic about reputation of country? How you how you attract tourists from UK, United States, all over the world? Uh, of course, we can't compare ourselves to France, Spain, or Italy in terms of number of tourists, but tourism is one, uh, as well, an important branch of, of our economy, and, and I, have, I think we have yearly about 20 million tourists from around the world, which is not a, s a small number. And uh, gastronomy is, is not a small uh, component of, of, uh, of, of, of our brand, of a brand of our country. You know, uh, for example, in 2019 and this year, Krakow was awarded uh, the name of uh, European Capital of Gastronomy Culture, for example, with the award, with the title being awarded for the first time in, in history. And uh, also, Krakow is one of two Polish cities that appears on the pages of the famous Michelin Guide, with mm -hmm. 26. Uh, uh, with 26 uh, restaurants being being recommended over there, so we definitely pay a close attention to gastronomy as part of our of our national brand. Thank you, Oana. Where we can find Romanian food, oh. except in 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 <laughs> Banat. <laughs> uh, well, uh, mostly mostly in Banat, yeah. uh, and actually, um, I would just like to mention that there is a small village, um, uh, not very far from uh, between. Um, Vršac and Pančevo, mm -hmm. let's say. It's called Novo Selo. There's a small Romanian community there, and they have a uh, bread festival called Banatski Hrad. Bread? Hrad. Yes. Yeah, when is that? Uh, 30th of September. Uh, 30th of September. Third, so so September last, last day of... Yeah. Yes, last day of September Never. every year. Mm -hmm. And they, they have like a bread competition, and uh, they have a jury, so... You it's, will go there yes, then? Yes, yes, so, yes. It's, so it's, we'll go, we'll it's go a very it. exotic event. It's not a big event, but it's very exotic. Um, so other than that, uh, I would like to say that the best food I had in Serbia was in uh, Svrlig, which is a small town near Niš, where we mm -hmm. uh, took a, a ladies' trip. Um, yeah. On for, the eight, March. for March 8. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, for March 8. And, yeah. Kati um, was also there. Yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. and um, it is actually in these uh, smaller places that you can find fantastic food. And one of the things I always um, say about Serbia um, and, and about this part of the world in, in general is that you can still find fresh, homegrown, healthy food. And that is uh, definitely a plus that should be more exploited than it, than it is. Uh, because, we, like I said um, uh, previously, we in Romania also... Um, um, reverse now a lot to um, to rural and uh, and ethnic uh, and try to 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 promote a local uh, food and we also uh, try to uh, when we when we advertise tourism to always include um, uh, gastronomy uh, homegrown products. Super. 
Thomas, what uh, will be your uh, suggestion for our <coughs> tourism industry and tourism promotion? You are here in Serbia almost one year or one, one full year. So after one year, what can you say? What, what is good and what is wrong in our, in our position ourselves on, 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 on the global level? Well, I can, I can uh, say what is our uh, experience. Uh, what, hap what helped a lot uh, to the um, Czech uh, uh, tourism or tourism industry. Uh, Prague was is, a touristic is, city even during yes, communism. Is, but uh, yeah. what helped a lot uh, is a film industry. We are, uh, film. We are very um, famous uh, in this branch. Uh, they are filmmakers. Uh, coming from all the world, uh, making films uh, in, uh, in Prague or uh, in the surroundings, and uh, it helps a lot, especially in the, uh, Asia, uh, when they see uh, films or film series uh, uh, shoot in, in Prague, uh, they, they want to, to come, they want to have a wedding, uh, and, and there are millions, millions of, of, of tourists from South Korea, from uh, from China, from Japan, and this is something what uh, Belgrade could uh, renew because the, the film industry was very famous also here, and uh, uh, through this uh, you, you could be much, much more known in the world. Thank you. Roman, is there a Slovenian restaurant in Belgrade or every, anywhere in uh, Serbia? <laughs> no, fortunately not. Uh, there used to be one in Prague, which was the only Slovenian restaurant outside. Say, also the, Slovenia, uh -huh. really? Yeah, it's it's quite difficult to export uh, food, and maybe for our tourism is much better. The Slovenian food stays in Slovenia because yeah, come come here and eat. <laughs> yes, uh, so but you can find a lot of Slovenian products uh, in the Serbian yeah. uh, shops, as a prosciutto or a kranska klobasa, as I said, or some cheeses and uh, a lot of processed food. So. It is, it is quite common in Serbia to, to find some Slovenian uh, food products, but you cannot go into the Slovenian restaurants, unfortunately. Uh, not yet. Uh, maybe there will be uh, in the future some, but uh, for now. But there is uh, uh, one chef in Slovenia. Uh, one of the reasons have why Slovenian gastronomy de developed so, so well recently, I can say well, is that we have some uh, very good chefs. And one of them is also a Serbian honorary consul in Slovenia, Tomasz Kaučić in, in, in uh, Zemono uh, Castle. And he's uh, famous. Yeah, he's famous. And there we have, some, let's say, five or now maybe even ten chefs which are uh, really, really famous in the uh, uh, gastronomy uh, surrounding. So they, they, they basically they influenced all these... Uh, um, foodies and these people that, that follow the, the gastronomy media all over the world and then they decide where to go and spend their holidays. So this is, this is maybe one of the things uh, that Serbia can also use because you also have some great chefs and I think it, it could be made uh, and they were, they, they were uh, also serving abroad so they, can, they have a lot of contacts and they can help, help here maybe. And there's another thing about Serbia that uh, it's uh, apart from what the colleagues have said maybe can be uh, taken what Serbian cuisine is really uh, stands out, let's say, in this European environment is hospitality. So this is really, uh, I think that maybe hospitality was invented here in Serbia. So uh, I think this should be uh, uh, pointed out always that, you know, how, how uh, this is a very important element of, of Serbian gastronomy, let's say. Uh, talking about hospitality, Amr, please uh, tell us what was served uh, for uh, iftar dinner for President Vucic two weeks ago. <laughs> it was actually um, a great honor to have President Vucic. Um, so this was his first iftar dinner, as I as, as I. President, I believe. Yeah. Um, and it was um, since we are neighbors, it was um, uh, easy to pass by. It was a great honor, and so we had um, lamb, um, a full lamb with uh, with rice and pine nuts and. Um, uh, raisins, so it's a mix of a little bit of mix of uh, sweet and sour. But I should say that there is a long presentation that took a lot of time to prepare. Feel free to upload it on your side. Feel free to put it on the uh, on the um, uh, on the, um, the screen as well. And um, the good thing, um, we, we don't have an, um, an, um, an Egyptian restaurant, 
But I can assure you of but the Arabic, four. Arabic restaurant? I was just say, yeah. And I can assure you of the four or the five Arab restaurants that are in town, almost every chef is Egyptian, or quite a few of them are there. So you can't be you know, also pasting it in, in parallel. And then uh, on June 30th, uh, Egypt is going to be guest of honor for the um, African uh, Tour Party Festival at the Museum of African Art. So can I assure you that there will be, um, there will be a stand there. And then since you did uh, speak also about what, what we share, um, you will see, I mean, we love Serbian cuisine and um, um, it's, uh, it's made us feel at home since we came, particularly since it's a very vegetarian-like cuisine with the full barbecue uh, uh, service <laughs> and that you so we have lamb. <laughs> so we show that actually uh, the grill, the grill in Egypt is is very popular, just like as it is in, in Serbia. You will see some different um, types of grilling if you skim through the presentation uh, throughout, uh, as as this as you see. Um, and we may have a stand at the Leskovac Barbecue Festival, which is the last week of August. Uh, we may have a stand for um, some of this grill. It will be great to compare the similarity, but also the specificity of each of the grills. So from now to August. Please be on diet because you will, um, you'll be invited to eat about there. And also in September, uh, we will have our Food Planet Festival on Main Square of Novi Sad, and you, of course, will be, will be there. Uh, please take a seat for, for a while. I think we have results of our. Evo, sada je vreme da vidimo i rezultate. Naše tablet, ankete. This is the results. Uh, does any panelist want to comment on this result? Uh, I will. I will translate. Uh, which which are the the the, the most important motives uh, to choose destination for for summer vacation, uh, where you you will be back on some 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 de destination. So first, beaches. Uh, second, food. Uh, third, the natural beauties. Uh, four, the hospitality, kindness of people. Uh, five, uh, nightlife and entertainment. And something else is uh, zero percent. So this is the this is a survey from from the audience in in in, uh, in the conference. So. So natural beauties, uh, no, beaches still number one, so we are traditional. Uh, then natural beaches, the, uh, nat nat natural beauties, then, then food as, as, as third. Can someone uh, comment this? Pakota? I think that there, So that this, are, is, this is made no, no, this, by Croatian. Yeah, no, <laughs> generally saying, I think that we are now moving from this, I would say, conservative old uh, traditional way, uh, uh, tourism based in, in the region, especially in Croatia. I think people are now getting more interested in food and the beauties. So it's, uh, the nature is very important. So it's very promising to see that not only the beaches are crucial and key for Serbian tourists. I think this is a very nice potential for my country as well and for, for the other countries. Thank you. Do we have a question from the audience? Any question? No? Thank you. Hvala, gospodinu Robertu Čoban i njegovim sagovornicima. Eto, to bi bio panela jedan. 